Hey folks, welcome back. Johnny Rome's here again, and I'm gonna be breaking down another photo set with my Safari 944 that I made recently. I went out to Antelope Island, which is kind of near the Great Salt Lake here in Northern Utah. Um, and we had a really nice sunset that was going on and I found this really cool parking lot that was pretty much empty. Um, so I decided to kind of make a really nice set of some different camera angles and compositions with my Safari 944. We're gonna be working in Adobe Photoshop on the web. Now I've been thoroughly enjoying using Photoshop on the web because it just allows me to have greater flexibility wherever I'm working, whether I'm at my own computer or if I'm traveling and I'm using somebody else's computer, I don't have to worry about about whether or not they have Photoshop installed. And I have access to all of my cloud saved photos as well. So I can just continue and edit from wherever I had stopped. And I can have access to almost everything that full-blown Photoshop has to offer straight from my browser. So I've already made some base edits in Adobe Lightroom. Now we're going to take over these photos into Photoshop on the web to make our final adjustments and really round out these images and also clean up some distractions that we have going on here. Okay, so first things first, I'm going to remove some of these distractions. So despite the fact that the parking lot was empty, we had a reasonable amount of forced manure um, because it was a bridal trailhead. So we're going to go and use the uh, retouch remove brush um, and we're going to zoom in to our photograph. I'm gonna make the brush just a little bit larger. And then I'm just gonna brush away. And we can change it to remove after each stroke or um, continue going on. So I'm gonna turn remove after each stroke off as that will allow me to continue brushing. So I'm gonna make one final adjustment on this photograph um, that I feel that the sky is just a little too um, soft, bright, soft, and it's not as contrasty as I'd like it to be. So I'm going to select the darken brush and I'm going to go quite large here. I'm going to put my exposure down so it's not too strong. I'm going to go to 25%. Now what this does is it allows you more flexibility with your brushing. So I'm going to brush in the whole sky. So that's just a 25% brush on the entire sky. And I kind of like this option rather than selecting the sky and adjusting that because I have gone into the mid ground as well and on the clouds. So this just gives me more control of where I'm having those local adjustments placed in this scene. Here's this photo after having applied those edits. Okay, next photograph. This is a composition that I really like. This kind of, um, in my automotive photography, just kind of coming on a higher angle, looking down on, you know, the passenger side fender or driver's side fender. But here we're gonna do some more cleanup. And I'm gonna really put the remove tool to work on this one because there's a decent amount of patina on these headlight covers um, from just rock chips and stuff. It is a 40 year old vehicle, so. That's uh, kind of how it goes. Okay, so we're going to zoom in, get nice and close. I'm gonna go to probably about 12, my pixel size. And then I'm just gonna select every single rock chip. This gets a little tedious, but it makes a huge difference after all is said and done. Now we can zoom out and admire much cleaner headlight covers. I've noticed a little blemish here I'm gonna go ahead and clean that up as well. Slightly larger brush, remove that one. Very nice. One final thing we're gonna do, we're gonna enhance the separation of light and shadows with this photograph. So if we look at the bottom right, it's dark, and obviously the light source is coming from the top corner, but I'm gonna make this a little bit more emphasized. So we're going to go back to the retouch tool and we're going to select lighten and we're going to go with a very large brush. So in the selection panel, I'm going to adjust my brush to the maximum of 5,000 pixels. This is going to help me just have a lot more smoother experience with my brushing. And we're going to just brighten up those corners. Very subtle, but it just adds a nice contrast between that shadowy corner on the bottom right and we have it mirrored with a really nice highlighted corner on the top left. So with this final image we're going to combine everything we've done in the first two to fully round this one out. So once again we have all of this horse manure that we're going to use the retouch tool to remove 
Wow, so much better already, but we're not done yet. What I wanna do next is use the darken tool on the foreground. So we have these really nice flowers that are nicely blurred out, but I just want to darken it a little bit more to create more separation between the foreground and our midground. So I'm just gonna brush in here. And now I'm gonna do the exact opposite on our light direction, which is coming from the top left. I'm gonna drop the exposure down on this one to about 25% once again. And we're just gonna brush in toward the car just ever so slightly. And I'm gonna drop it down even further to 12% just to kind of continue on to the top part of the frame. Very nice. Now there's one final thing that I want to do to this photo just to make it a little bit more punchy. I don't think the saturation is as much as I would like it to be. So I'm gonna to go to adjustment layers and then we're gonna to go to hue and saturation. And then I'm just gonna push the saturation up just a little bit on the overall image. And then I'm gonna come down to the reds. And I'm gonna increase those as well just to make that foreground stand out a little bit more. And then one final thing is with the blues. I feel like the blues are leaning a little bit too much toward purple. So I'm gonna drag those toward teal just a little bit and increase the lightness as well. That's the saturation. And there we have it. Our final image to round up this set. And here we have all three final photos together as I had intended for this photo set. So hopefully this has been helpful and a little bit of insight in how I curate my photo sets, especially utilizing Photoshop on the web. This is such an incredibly useful tool that you can use no matter where you are on whatever computer that you have access to. So definitely be sure to check out Photoshop on the web where you can enhance your photos, fully round them out, and even remove unwanted distractions with ease.